Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of my talk on Cayley vibrations in the Brian Solomon spin 7 manifolds. In this video, as I mentioned in the first part, I will be talking about um, the Brian Solomon spin 7 manifolds. So let me start by um, some history. So in 1989, Robert Bryan and Simon Solomon constructed the first examples of complete manifolds with um, full autonomy spin 7. So what does that mean? It means that um, the holonomy of the induced metric is equal to spin 7. The way they constructed um, these examples um, was by um, considering the negative spin bundle of S4 and um, they, con they, they constructed an explicit um, spin 7 structure on such a manifold on the total space of this vector bundle, and they constructed this spin seven structure in such a way that um, it was it was um, torsion free, and it turned out that the holonomy um, of the manifold was actually equal to spin seven and not just contained in spin seven. So. Let me start by recalling the geometry of the negative spin bundle over S4. So we start with um, the sphere with a round metric. So S4 with GS4, be the sphere with a round unit metric. And we consider P spin 4 be the spin structure over S4. So the spin structure over S4 is the double cover Of a frame bundle. So the frame bundle um, has structure group SO4. So SO4 has a double cover, which is spin 4, and doing that fi fiber wise in a way, um, and, and by the fact that S4 satisfies some topological condition, we get um, the spin structure. Now, um, mu plus and mu minus are the spin representation. So what is the spin representation? So spin four is, this is a known fact, is isomorphic to sp1 times sp1. So sp1 times sp1 act in GLH times GLH as, um, well, they, they split as sp1 acts in the first GLH and sp1 acts on the second GLH, so this acts in this and this one acts in this one by right multiplication of the quaternionic conjugate. So mu plus or minus of P applied to some vector A is equal to A times P bar. So this is the positive and negative spin representation. Now, um, the negative spinner bundle of S4 is given by the associated bundle as follow. So the negative spinner bundle of S4 is defined as P spin 4, so the spin structure times H, so times the quaternions, and we quotient this by the um, equivalent relationship given by the spin representation. What it is true is that the negative spinner bundle of S4 has a canonical linear connection induced by the Levi Civita connection, and this connection is called the spin connection. This is essentially by construction, indeed, we the Levi Civita connection is a connection on the tangent bundle, so T S4, which induces a, induces a connection on the frame bundle. Now the frame bundle induces a connection on 
the spin structure by lifting the connection and the connection on the spin structure induces the connection on the spinner bundle. Now it is well known that once we have a connection on a vector bundle, we can take the um, tangent space at each point of the negative spinner bundle of S4 and split it as an horizontal plus a vertical space. The vertical space is um, given by the kernel of the differential of the projection. So pi of S4 is given by the usual projection map and the horizontal space is given by the connection. The choice of an horizontal space is also known as the Harishman connection and it's equivalent to the usual notion of connection. So let me um, say a couple of things in local coordinates so that we have a clearly clearer understanding of what is going on. So we take B0, B1, B2, B3, be a local autonomous co-frame for S4 and we let the fibers be parameters locally by A0, A1, A2 and A3. So then the dual space of H is spanned by these four vectors here. So the pullback of the co-frame for S4, while the dual space of the vertical space is spanned by xi con i equal to d a i plus rho i, where these rho i's are one forms depending on the spin connection and on the point of the fibers we're at. So we are finally ready to define the spin seven structures um, on the negative spinner bundle that were defined by Brian and Solomon. So for every positive constant, C bigger than zero, the spin seven structure on the negative spinner bundle of S4 is given by this formula here. So VC is defined as um, U square. So U square is a function of R square. So it's a function of the distance function from the zero section plus V square, the volume of the horizontal part and V square is again a, functions, a function of R square plus UV, the sum over I of AI wedge omega I, where AI and omega I are the standard basis of the anti-self dual forms on H and nu. So it is clear from the definition that um, if, if we change nu with um, R for one and H with um, R for two, we have uh, the usual um, spin seven structure, the mo local model in um, up to a conformal factor U square and V square. So what Brian and Solomon showed is that um, such a spin seven structure is torsion free. So um, VC is a spin seven manifold. And moreover, the allonomy of the induced metric is equal to spin seven. So what I, I, I said um, at the beginning of this, of this video. Okay, so now let's let's um, go on and ask uh, what are the Cayley's manifolds in the Brian Solomon manifolds. The first proposition, uh, well, the first theorem that I would like to mention is due to um, Tsai and Wang in 2018, and they showed that the zero section is the only compact Cayley submanifolds of the Brian Solomon manifold. The proof relies on a barrier argument 
And well, what they actually showed, and it's here in bracket, is that um, every compact minimal submanifold needs to be contained in the zero section. So um, as the zero section is clearly Cayley and four dimensional, we, um, we get this theorem. The second theorem that I would like to mention is due to um, Karijanis and Minou in 2005. So what they've shown is that if we take a minimal submanifold of a sphere, of S4, then they constructed a two-dimensional vector sub-bundle of the ambient space, which restricted to sigma 2 gives a Cayley submanifold. The last example, and it's, it's just trivial by, by the definition of, of the spin seven structure given by Brian and Solomon, is that the fibers of the usual map are Cayley submanifolds. In particular, I would like to point out that the negative spinner bundle of S4 is a Cayley vibration in a natural way. And it is a Cayley vibration also in the sense of, of, of a naive definition. Well, the method, the standard method to construct manifolds, well, sub-manifolds with um, uh, exceptional autonomy. So a way to construct calibrated submanifolds is by homogeneity one um, action. So let me recall the idea here. So if we take G, be a lead group acting on a spin seven manifold, for every three dimensional orbit of G, we can find a unique Cayley passing through it. The reason is this theorem um, due to um, Harvey and Lawson in 1982 that they proved that through any three dimensional submanifold of a spin seven manifold, there exists a unique Cayley passing through it. So, given a principal, uh, given a three dimensional orbit of G, we, found a K, we, we can find a Cayley. So, if the principal orbits of such an action are all three dimensional, it is sensible to look for G invariant Cayleys and vibrations. The idea is to consider a curve in the space of orbits and impose the question tau equal to zero. So, let me recall tau is the omega 2 valued four form which vanishes if and only if the submanifold is Cayley. So the equation tau equal to zero is going to reduce our problem to a system of ODEs. So what we hope to do, what we want to do is to find the league groups um, with a three-dimensional principal orbit in our manifold. Um, a natural place to look for this object, objects, is the automorphism group. So Brian and Solomon, um, they constructed the automorphism group, they, they studied it. And um, so if, if we write the negative spinner bundle as an associated bundle, Brian, uh, Brian and Solomon proved that um, sp2 times sp1 is the automorphism group. So let me tell you how sp2 and sp1 act on, um, on the negative spinner bundle of S4. So sp2 um, act on the first factor here. So if we take, um, so, well, uh, let's first observe that sp2 is isomorphic to spin five. So we, if we get any element of S of five, so this element of S of five is going to 
not every element of S5, well, SO5 acts on S4. So through the differential, we get that SO5 acts on the frame bundle. And uh, by taking the double cover of this action, we can lift it to a spin five action on the frame bundle, on the spin structure, uh, apologies. So let me um, repeat this passage. So um, the first factor, so SP2 acts on the negative spinner bundle S4 by uh, lifting the SO5 acting on S4. The second factor, SP1, acts on H by the usual left multiplication. So as mu minus was chosen to be um, acting on H via right multiplication of the quaternionic conjugate, we can um, we see immediately that um, sp2 times sp1 acting on p spin 4 times h passes to the quotient. And so it belongs to the automorphism group of the negative spinner bundle S4. So let's go back to our original problem. So we want to find um, three-dimensional Lie group, well, Lie groups acting on our negative spinner bundle of S4 in such a way that um, the orbit, the principal orbit is three-dimensional. So we take G, a subgroup of SP2 times SP1, such that it respects the product of um, so this product here, and we also assume that the orbits, the principal orbits, are three dimensional. Um, well, the reason for assuming that the orbits are three dimensional, the, the principal orbits are three dimensional, is clear by um, the slides we two slides ago, so the slides where we discuss the homogeneity one method. And um, the reason why we assume that um, the subgroup G respects the product is for simplicity. Now we can classify all the subgroups of this kind and this is a Lie algebra exercise. And the result is that the subgroups that we have are just this one, so what the leaf to sp2 of the subgroups of SO5, so SO3 times the identity acting on R5, so on S4, or sp1 times the identity acting in the same way, or SO3 acting irreducibly on R5. Um, so these are the subgroups of sp2 times R. Uh, one and on the other end the action on the fibers is given by the identity times sp1. All the what I would like to point out is that all the subgroups in this list e, these subgroups are all um, sp1s. Okay this is all I wanted to say in this video. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next one.